All right, everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video with Fat Phil. And we're going to talk about regular energy the same way I did cantina energy. This is going to be like the second part of this series where we're looking at energy efficiency. And we're going to only focus on the big three kinds of energy. Your cantina, your regular, and your ship energy. The reason I always call those the big three is because they're the ones that are getting you gear, character shards, relic materials, right? Mod energy is a completely separate entity. It's this completely separate beast, and you need to think of it differently than you do these other kind. So let's dive right into our video, and let's get started talking about regular energy. So I've talked about this concept before. For any player ever, you need to be doing 300 minimum, 400 maximum energy towards character shards on hard nodes in, with regular energy a day. That is like bare you know, 300 is bare minimum, 400 is the maximum, so somewhere in between those numbers. That sounds like a lot, and everybody's like, oh, Phil, that's so much. You get 375 free energy every single day. You get 10 energy per hour, right? You get an energy refill every six minutes, right? There's 60 minutes in an hour, that's 10 energy, 24 hours, 240. Then you get your three free energy refills of 45 energy a piece, right? 45 plus 45 plus 45 is 135. That's 375 energy. And you can go up to three refreshes of 50 crystals. For an extra 150 crystals, you can get an additional 360 energy. So it's really not that hard then to say that you could spend 400 energy on character shards, right? It's really not that much to say. So even if you do a single refresh, you do a single refresh and you do, you know, 300, you, know, you do 400 energy, you're still going to get about 10 attempts on a Kyrotech node or whatever else, right? So you'll be fine. So I want to cover this, right? Just wanted to start this off. We're going to get into some different teams. I've shown these teams before. We'll kind of skip through them real quick. And then we'll get into some of the other things of being efficient with this energy and why it's so important. Jack, this is for you. You keep putting Relic 9, Curse on Unworld Police in the comments. And I'm just going to Throw them in videos to hopefully appease you and try and get this energy out of the channel, right? We cannot have this Relic 9 Cup nonsense in this channel, guys. Please no. All right. So here's just a few popular farms, right? This Imperial Trooper team, you can farm this entire team using 320 energy total. 320 regular energy total, you can farm this entire team at the same time. With 380 energy total, you can farm 8th Brother, which also shares a node with IG-2000. Droidica, which shares a node with Xanadu Blood. Django Fett, who shares a node with Houndstooth. And then Bosk. Again, if you guys aren't catching on, executor requirements right here. 380 energy. Again, that's just, that's like, that's like a long, you know, you're not going to be doing that 380 energy the entire time because Bosk is eventually going to drop off. So again, I want to just make sure you guys understand the, the total energy here. And then even your Bad Batch, if you farm all four of them at the same time, it's 360 energy. It's really like when you when you look at this one and you're like, man, I'm getting, you know, five characters. I'm doing way better than like this person down here. You can't think like that, right? You need to think in terms of just total energy. That yes, you're doing these guys. That's great. They're doing these guys. Like what's the difference? Well, the difference is that eventually you're going to have to do these characters and they're going to get to do these ones. So you're both going to spend like the same amount, right? It really doesn't matter. Um, so I just found that kind of funny, right? The reason I say you need to farm this much in energy is because character shards don't accumulate naturally, right? When you look in conquest and territory battles, territory wars, you know, grand arena, like the only way you can passively get character shards is maybe through some of these, you know, drops that you'll get in assault battles, right? You can maybe get lucky here. Um, you've also got them in the galactic challenges, right? You can sometimes get them here, but you're not really getting characters for these hard nodes that often, right? They're not accumulating naturally over time in any substantial way. However, gear does accumulate over time between conquest, territory battles, territory wars, raids, all these other places, right? Your daily challenges, they all drop gear they don't drop character shards. That's why character shards needs to be the focal point of your energy. So with the rest of your energy, right? You know, you, you're spending all these, you know, what, what else do you do with your energy? I'm going to show you guys a few nodes, popular nodes that I farm 
explain when to use them, why, pros and cons, if there are any cons. So let's go to the first one here, light side 1D for carbonite circuit boards. So this node right here is how you can quickly farm carbonite circuit boards. It's a fantastic node because it's early. It's very easy. Like you're going to get a lot of, you know, carbonite circuit boards. The problem here, the con with this node is that it's not long time, long term farmable, right? It's not a long term solution. It's a short term solution. Here's why there's nothing else on this node of value. The only stuff you're getting here is for carbonite circuit boards. So you are shoehorning yourself into only making progress on a single thing at a time, right? Now, in a short term bind, right, when you're like, I need 40 carbonate circuit boards, this is your answer, right? But you really can make out better in other places. And I want to show something here with the with this thing right here, right, spending about 50 crystals on this, right? So you're going to be able to get, you know, I don't know, call it, I don't know how many of these things you get at a time. It's been a while since I've done it, but say you get 50 of these at a time, right? So if you get 50 of these at a time, maybe, I don't know, maybe you get 100, I don't know. You, you don't even get like 50. You say you get 50 pieces out of there at a time, right? So, you know, you're going to get 50 of those. Maybe you get like, you know, I don't know, 20 of these. Like you're going to get, you know, I don't know. You're going to get some decent gear out of there, right? However, however, right? You know, there's always a but, right? Nothing that comes before the word but actually, you know, means anything. Um... But this, this pack right here, I always say that if you get the 100 carbonite circuit boards, you normally lost a little bit of value that I feel based on my drop rates at that node that I spend 500 crystals worth of refreshing that node, I'm going to get about 150 carbonite circuit boards. I kind of call that the break even point. So anything I get above the 150 is money in the bank, right? Here's the catch. And this is the thing. Even at the 150, Yes, I broke even in terms of crystals, but I saved time. And time is a very valuable resource. Time is the one resource in this game that you can't, you know, the reason players spend money is to save time, right? That you can't go forward, you can't go backwards. You can spend money and save the time of having to farm it, right? And that's the concept with this pack. So I farm that node when I'm in a pinch, but it's not a long-term solution because of how good that pack really is. That pack is amazing. So wanted to cover that one. All right, next, light side 7B for Kyratech Salvage. This is my favorite node in the game to farm, you know, for regular energy here. So you get this piece right here, the Kyratech Shock Prod. This is the most, of the two Kyratech pieces, this one is far more common it's one you need a lot more of than the other piece right so that can be problematic but also the other pieces you get here you get this mark 7 armor mod and this fabrotech data pad right and we're just going to go over to our relic scavenger here and show you guys some fun facts about those two pieces so uh does this piece look familiar right it should because that's what's on the kyrotech node so you're able to farm bronzium wiring and kyrotex at the same time and this is, if you guys ever ask me like secrets to, you know, Fat Phil's success, this node is the answer. I can farm Bronzium wiring and I can farm Kyrotech at the same time. And that is so, so important. I don't know if you guys can hear my cat scratch, scratching in the background. Nim, I do apologize. Um, but being able to be this efficient where you're getting, like Bronzium wirings are very difficult to get, right? They're very difficult to get. And then you can get Kyrotex on top of that. I mean, that's a win-win. And then the Mark 7 armor mods, right? Just to show you guys this piece here, right? These look familiar, don't they? Right? You can get some of these things and make chromium transistors. So now I'm getting progress towards two relic pieces and Kyrotex all at the same time. That's being efficient with your energy, right? That node is a key to my success in this game is being able to earn all three of those things at once. So maybe I only get one Kyrotech, right? Which would lose me crystals to the Kyrotech. But the amount of bronzium wiring I get makes up for it. That's how you're efficient with your resources. You're doing a lot with as much as you can. All right, next, light side 9F for bayonets. So this node is a little bit different, right? 
there are definitely some cons here, but it's still a very good node. So you have this node here with this bi bayonet salvage here, biotech implants, which is a core gear, Mark three hollow projectors. This piece is trash. And then this Mark two hypo syringe, right? So we're going to go into our relic pieces here because all that gear, yes, you do need some of it at times, but never like enough that you'd be farming it, right? Except that this piece right here, we just looked at it. You can use it for carbonite circuit boards. Everybody knows where we're going next, right? Mark three hollow projectors we can use for aeroidium heat sinks. And then that bayonet piece itself, you can use for impulse detectors. So now... In terms of relics, that node 9F, you're making progress on farming three different kinds of relic materials and getting some core gear pieces on top of it. So you're making progress towards three different areas all at the same time. And this is definitely a node that I kind of would call like a, to see benefit here, you need to do this node for a while, right? You're not going to see it over a course of, you know, a week, right? This is like a month long project. You'll see the benefits of farming this node. So, you know, if you're, again, this game's a marathon, not a sprint. So a month really isn't that bad to have to see like impact here. But I just want to make sure everybody understands that, that it's not like you do this for a day and you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I'm doing so good. It's, you've got to wait a long period of time to truly see the benefit of doing something like this, but being efficient getting three different relic pieces at the same time, all while farming that, and then getting this on top. I mean, it's all that's all gravy, right? That's all really, really good stuff there. That's a great node. So now the last regular node I want to talk about is Dark Side 8A. So this is the, you know, yin and yang relationship for Kyrotex. You have your 8A here, which gives you the Kyrotech Battle Computer Salvage. So... I don't farm this node nearly as much as I do the light side Kyrotech for multiple reasons. The relic salvage on here isn't as good, right? So this piece here, we can use it for carbonite circuit boards, which is fine. But as I said, that pack in the, you know, in that store is so good that, you know, I'm never really hurting to the point of like, I need to get these in excess, right? Like it just, it doesn't happen that way. And then the other piece, the Mark VI, um, I don't think that's actually used for anything. I was trying to double check this the other day. I don't think that piece is used anywhere. Oh, no, it is. You can get some bronzium wiring with it. I guess you can. So you can get bronzium wiring with this piece, right? So I do stand corrected. You actually do get probably a little bit better value for relics out of this. Problem being, the Kyrotech itself isn't nearly as common as the other one which like classic cg right so i find that the the and i guess and i guess i should point out right i guess you know the other side of that right you know so you are able to earn like kyrotex with that but if you look at the difference in the scrap rates here right so you're getting 10 out of that you get 10 out of these now how many of these do you need to craft it so you need five of these so for every five of these that drop, just for the sake of the argument here, right? For every five of these pieces that drop down here, right? You only need one of these. All the way up, all the way up. You'll need one of these. So in terms of how valuable that is, right? You're, it's not the greatest, right? And, you know, you're honest. And then the honest thing down here with the carbonate circuit boards, I never am at the point where I'm just will. I'm always willing to buy this stuff, so it's never a big problem. So again, that's just personal preference there on the Kyrotex. I think you could really do both, and you'll be fine. Um, but yeah, I just I think that the unfortunately the dark side Kyrotech just doesn't get nearly as much love as the light side one does. So I always farm it, and then I buy the dark side Kyrotex. I really don't think you're gonna run into a problem if you did. One or the other, just it's almost it's almost always harder to get the light side Kyrotech because I don't know if you guys ever noticed this. Um, this is a side, a little bit of a side tangent, but I think it's well worth everybody's time to understand here. Um, so in the guild events down here, 
like this will drop for 15 at a time, but the other one will only drop for five at a time. So just, you know, more negativeness, right? Um, but anyway, so let's go to the next topic here. Galactic Legend tickets. So with Galactic Legend tickets, you can only earn tickets for that Galactic Legend by farming the kind of like nodes that they align with. So for Lord Vader, you're only farming dark side energy. And for Jedi Master Kenobi, only light side energy. What are the nodes you're going to use? Uh, the, the Chirotech nodes are what I used. I spam those Chirotech nodes to oblivion when I'm farming Galactic Legend tickets. That's what, if you want to be efficient there, understand that Galactic Legend tickets, you want to just farm their nodes. Don't try and spend like... I will go on a hiatus where I won't spend any like energy on a dark side um, node if I'm doing a light side galactic legend. I just I go horrible with it. Now, there's something else I want to mention. The galactic legend currency that you can buy down here. This stuff isn't horribly priced, right? Um, what I would say is that if you do your 50 crystal energy refreshes, you're, you're doing better off. But if you're doing hundreds... From a pure face value of the ticket itself, doing 100 crystal energy refreshes isn't worth it. However, however, right? You know, there's always a but, right? Um, yes, you might only earn seven tickets from using that 100, you know, uh, energy refresh. But you also earned Kyratex, stuff for bronzium wirings, carbonite circuit boards, depending on what you're farming. So you earned all, that, all those other pieces along with your tickets so you know the point i'm making here is that or you know what i'm trying to you know, trying to portray for everybody is that you can't just look at like a small little piece and say oh i'm not making as much of the tickets you're getting all these other resources along the way and that's another fat fill tip for you you've got to look at the big picture you've got to look at everything and figure out how can I get the most out of my resources? So those Galactic Legend tickets, yes, it's faster just to go and buy them there rather than have to do the farming for it. But the farming for it is how I'm getting all the additional gear and relic pieces that allow me to jump from one thing to the next and not lose that much time. So please, guys, think of the big picture. The other way to think of big picture here, and I used BT1 and Trip Zero as really good examples. So... I was not planning to farm Afra for a very long time. And then I pulled BT1 from that special pack, you know, for the shard shop. And when I did that, I kind of got to thinking like, man, you know what? I really should get to the point where I farm trip zero. It's a, you know, he's a very easy node to do, right? It's a 60 energy node for me, right? Very easy. The big thing here though, reason I say think big picture I need to put myself in a position where I can pivot between any farm and not have to worry, right? That I want to be able in that like, oh my gosh, all of a sudden Afra is amazing. I want to be in a position where I can get her. And if I can do that by getting trip zero, even a seven star and leaving them at gear one, level one, until I'm ready to farm Hondo and Sana, I can do that. But think of that big picture that don't just not farm a character because they're like, oh, I don't need, you know, um, who would be a great example here. I don't need range trooper yet. I'm doing this. But if you've got a little bit of excess energy, it might be worth your time doing him now because down the road, you may need that energy elsewhere. So just keep that in mind. Think big picture. And then the last thing is you got to start early. So I've got Zori here and I've got Tuscan Chieftain, two characters that I am currently farming on nodes. Um... You've got to start early. You cannot afford to wait around in this game. You cannot afford to, especially with hard nodes. Hard nodes take a very long time to do. They just, they take significantly longer. The earlier you can make progress on that, the better. And it's why, like, I'm thinking ahead to, hey, I might want to get Ray in six, eight months. I, I want to have Zori at the point where I don't need to go, I'm going to go get Ray. And then I'm going to be sitting there like, oh, I need to go farm Zori now. So, you know, guys, you got to start early. The earlier you start on these things, the better because you have a limited window to do it. But 
I mean, that's the video, guys. Hopefully, you found this stuff helpful, like with the Kyrotex, right? Again, I still think the dark side Kyrotex isn't quite as valuable as the light side because of that pack. Again, this pack up here for Carbonite Circuit Boards, I really think kills the ben the long-term benefit, right? And I say long-term, the long-term benefit of farming these things because there is short-term benefit to farming a lot of Carbonite Circuit Boards over a period of like a week, right? Like I can see a ton of value. I've done it myself. But long-term, you cannot rely on this node for Carbonite Circuit Boards because you will lose resources elsewhere. Like go think, if you go farm this node instead, if you're like, you know what? I need some Carbonite Circuit Boards. I'm gonna go farm this Kyrotech node, right? I'm gonna go farm this node here and I'm just gonna pray that I get enough of these pieces, right? That's a very realistic thing to do. And that can help supplement your Kyrotex over time. Think, if you get two Kyrotex every single time you do this, and say you get 10 of these pieces, which 10 of those, what does that translate to? Let's just show some math here. Again, I don't ever, I, I do apologize. I don't write these things down, guys. I just am not, I don't have the time to always write that down. But so look, you're going to get the equivalent of like one Carbonite circuit board. So let's say you get 20 of these a day, just for the sake of numbers, right? You're going to get about two Carbonite circuit boards. That's over 700 carbonite circuit boards in a year, just from like on top of farming your Kyrotex. So yes, this stuff does add up over time. That's a significant amount of carbonite circuit boards to get on top of farming Kyrotex and other stuff. I mean, make it out like a bandit at that point. So hopefully you guys found this video informational, found it helpful. Let me know what your thoughts are. As always, smash the subscribe button, leave likes, leave comments, and I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.